Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to another video where we look at how we can build a patch from scratch on the lovely Korg monologue. So this video is very much going to be a follow-on from the last video that I posted on the channel where we looked at how we could build drum and percussion sounds on the monologue. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend that you pause just for a moment and go and check out that video first. Um, link in, in this uh, video's description and probably also a, a link appearing up here somewhere. Uh, before we carry on with this, because I'll, I'll assume a couple of uh, techniques that I'll, I'll be using in this video. So that being said, what we're going to be doing in this video is turning the monologue into a drum machine. Um, and we're going to do that by making extensive use of the motion sequencer, um, and in particularly step sequencing the motion sequencer. Before we get going, what I will say is there are a number of different ways that you can achieve this uh, kind of effect on the monologue. Um, I'm going to use a, a technique that I found has worked pretty well for me in the past, but uh, there are lots of different ways to do it. But the underlying, uh, underlying fundamental technique, I think, probably remains the same uh, whenever you're trying to do the drum machines on this. So that's kind of the, the takeaway from this video. Okay, so the way that I usually start um, when I'm building a, a drum pattern on the monologue is I will play in notes just on the uh, initialized patch at the moment just to let me infer where my kicks my snares my hi-hats that sort of thing are uh, so I'm just going to set my tempo I've been enjoying 82 and a half bpm quite specific uh, recently so if we set that playing and hit record okay so we're going to do the kicks Okay, there's some kicks. Uh, let's do some snares on the two and the four. And then the rest of these will be um, hi-hats, so I'm just going to put in some higher notes in, just play them in the step sequencer. So we play that back. Now we have a sequence that's melodic, but it will hopefully infer um, where our hi hats and kick are going to be. And it's quite a nice sequence anyway. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to turn VCO one like almost all the way down because we don't want it getting in the way with our initial uh, beat making. So um, the way that we're going to build the beat is by going into the motion sequencer and we're going to be step sequencing certain parameters. As I mentioned, there are different approaches to doing this, but the four parameters that I'm going to make use of here are going to be my filter cutoff, my filter resonance, my decay of my envelope generator, and the level of VCO2, which we'll come to um, in a moment. So um, the way that I usually start is by defining my kick drum sound. And I'm going to do that by using the filter as I showed in the previous video. So um, I'm going to crank up that resonance and we're going to lower that cutoff. So we've got, probably need headphones on to hear that. But we're also going to set our envelope generator to attack decay. We're going to send it to cutoff, set a bit of intensity. Starting to get that kick drum sound. Uh, to get a bit more click on our LFO, I'm going to switch to one shot mode into um, Sawtooth, send it to cut off, and just set a okay, uh, set a rate and intensity that gives us a bit more of a click. Cool. Okay, so uh, let's just remind myself where my kicks are. kick on every single one, so I'm just going to turn the resonance down for a second. Okay. So, um, let's get that kick sound back. So what I'm going to do on the steps where I have my uh, kick, I'm going to program in my four parameters basically as they're set at the moment. So that means that my resonance is going to be set to full 
on that one. On that one. And on that one. My cutoff is going to be set to where it is now, so I'll just give it a little wiggle. That one. That one. My uh, decay is going to be set as it is, so again, I'll just give it a little wiggle from where it is. In those three steps. And VCO2 is going to be at zero, so again, just give it a wiggle on those steps, like that. Now, because we are triggering the gate on every single one, we're still going to be getting uh, whatever our knobs are currently set to. And that's an important thing to note when we're doing our motion sequencing, is that if there's no motion sequencing set anywhere, we will just get however the knobs are currently set up. So if I... If I change the knobs, the motion sequencing takes over on those steps, but otherwise it defaults to the current settings. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's do our snares next. So the way we're going to do our snares, primarily, is that we're going to make sure that VCO2 is set to noise, and we're going to turn up VCO2. Uh, so on the ones where we're going to have our snares, we're going to make sure that VCO2 is set basically at full. So that's on my two or my four, like that. We're going to set the um, cutoff. Let's find a good place for it. About there, and maybe the resonance. About there. So again, we can go into those steps and just wiggle the knobs as to where they are at the moment. Like that. And here. Like that. And maybe we want to maybe shorten that decay just a little bit. Maybe more like that. So again, onto the steps. Uh, oh, let me just turn that one off and just give it a little wiggle. So again, if we set our knobs to something default. <laughs> Start to hear that drum beat. So every other um, step here is going to be our hi hat sound. So for our hi hat sound, we're going to go for a much shorter decay. We're going to open up our cutoff all the way, or we lower our resonance. I mean, not all the way down, but also we're going to have it quieter than the snare. So um, what we'll now do is go through all of those other steps and just wiggle the knobs as they are. Just to get those programmed in. Uh, and I'll now do a cut to the magic of editing once I've actually wiggled all these knobs. Okay, so I've gone through and I've wiggled the knobs on all of the remaining steps. So let's just turn down VCO1 now that we don't need it as a guide and listen to what we've got. Here, I've uh, modified the level of some of the hi hats in there, decay just to keep the beat a little bit interesting. One thing I would say uh, with any of these drum beats is that they sound cool with the drive turned up. And there's our drum beat. But um, here's my ulterior motive for suggesting that you played in notes to begin with. Uh, and that is that not only do we now have a drum machine, but we also have a groove box. So if we bring up VCO1. cool thing is if you kick VCO2 up into a waveform instead, we can do this. 
and just get the kick drum for a breakdown. And then bring the beat back by going back to noise. Incidentally, I really, really like those breakdowns with uh, VCO2 set to ring as well. Still sounds good with the drive turned. Turned down. But I have to say, I'm an absolute sucker for having it turned up. Seriously, hours and hours of fun. And of course, don't forget that there are other sequencer um, uh, functions in the sequencer edit in edit mode where we can play with uh, what we've got a little bit more. So, for example, if we wanted to switch our step length to something um, a little bit more interesting, maybe if we wanted sevens. Indeed, we could give it a swing. Yeah. That's cool. Hours and hours and hours of fun. Uh, and it has a definite vibe about it as well. It's never going to be replacing your 808 um, or your 909 or, or in my case, my Vermona. Um, but... Um, it has a definite vibe. I think it comes from the fact that we're abusing a piece of hardware to do something it's not meant to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that, guys. I hope you found that interesting and fun. And I hope that you go and try this technique out because it's it, it, it's it's really great fun. And it's such a wonderful uh, hack of the monologue uh, to get it to do something really, really great and, and interesting and, and unexpected, I think. Most people see this um, humble sub-$300 uh, monosynth and and you can show them that it, it, it can be a drum machine as well. I think that's a really, really cool thing. If you enjoyed it, guys, please do hit the thumbs up button and like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more videos on the monologue and other uh, videos on synthesis. Um, and go and check out some of the other videos on the channel as well if you haven't already done so. Um, thank you again for joining me on this great journey with the monologue. And I'll see you again soon, guys. Bye-bye.